Hey everyone. Hey everyone. Sorry about that. Just uh, just a quick summary of some of the tools we learned. So when we created a object like this box here, we needed to modify this object. So I'm going to go to hidden line mode so I can get a better view of it. Here we go. And uh, when we created the objects, you'll notice that if you clicked off of it and click back on it, the parameter menu did not appear anymore. We need to go to the modify panel. So learning a little bit about the modify panel. So remember, uh, well, if you don't remember, uh, the modify panel contains all the information for our 3D objects, including the name up here, which I will change to Superbox. To the right of that, we have color. And I'm sorry if you can't see it. I know it's a little off screen. And then you know, we have a modifier list and we have box and we have all our parameters. Now, if we add edit poly, by clicking on our modifier list, we can add any modifier we want to our object. And we want to add edit poly, like my edit poly, poly tutorial has. And we have our different modes to play around with, including vertex, which are the points between any polygons matching up. You get these little blue dots, these vertexes, and you can move them. You can scale them and rotate. Uh, your edges, which are your edges, of course. Your border, which are any open polygons your polygons, which are full polygons, and element, which are the objects inside a mesh um, that are not connected that you can grab multiple of. Now with vertex, we learned that we can uh, weld vert vertices together by using the weld tool. If you open up the little settings panel, the uh, weld settings open up, and if you grab the vertexes you wanna weld, like so, and then increase the number, Eventually they will weld and you'll see that before and after vertice count should change. You can either click OK to just uh, finish welding and that's the only weld you're going to do. You can click Apply and Continue if you're going to weld even more or you can click Cancel. So I'm going to click uh, Apply and Continue and then I will grab these two and I will click OK because that is a roof to a house. It is magical. So the cut, uh, sorry, the weld tool is very important there. Uh, when it comes to edge, the important tool I like here is edge extrusion. Uh, so if you had an edge that you really, really liked, and let's say there was no polygon under here, it was just like that roof. If I like this edge a lot, I will grab it, and I will hold shift, and I will use the move tool, and I will create a new polygon. A lot of modeling, uh, especially in gaming, is done using this kind of technique, extruding to make a character skin, that type of stuff. Um because we can make something like this house and you have a lot of control over it, like so. See, I just created the house just by using edge extrusion. But you'll notice that when I extrude all the edges, even though it looks good right here, um, these vertices aren't uh, welded together. So we go back to our vertex weld tool and I go to the settings and I see that before we have 16, after we have 14, because it's welded, apply and continue. Apply and continue. And I'm going one by one, uh, one corner by corner, because I have a lot more control over it. Apply and continue. And OK. Now they are welded. So let's say that I'm happy with my edges that I created. I extruded some edges. I created new polygons. I welded them shut. I go to polygon. Uh, and I can extrude now. So extruding means I can either pop uh, you know, a poly forward and create a whole new section using the extrude tool. Or I can push it inward. So if you go to Polygon, you go down your modifier list your, of the, your list of parameters. You go to Edit Polygons, you'll see an Extrude tool. You can just left click. You can grab as many faces as you want if you hold Control. If you hold Alt, less faces. So let me grab these two. And then I can left click and drag to extrude. Left click and drag to extrude. 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 That looks like a chicken foot. I go to my different top view. I'll work in here. And I will just change it like that. Okay. So I have an object I like. I extruded all the polygons. Great. Uh, to what I want. Now let's say I needed to add more polygon detail. Let's say up here, I need to add another line of polygons. I can either use the slice plane tool. 
with all the polygons selected. Sorry, use the slice plane tool. And you can see there's a preview. There's like a little preview line in there. If I move it up and down, see that preview line? I can slice. Click slice there. You'll notice I get a new polyline. So I can add more detail. I can modify it more. Or if I want a lot more control, I can use the cut tool. Once you click the cut tool, you know it's blue means it's active. I can now click on an edge or on a polygon itself. And I can create new lines. Now, remember, please especially really important those edges have to loop around you need to create an edge loop okay like that otherwise if our mesh is just doing something like this it is a very very bad mesh it needs to at least connect to uh, one of the vertexes that are already in our mesh now this is really really bad polyflow you should always keep your meshes flowing together properly like these two lines up here and keeping edge loops constant because it'll work better in ZBrush. The lighting will be more understand because if I go to realistic right now, you may not see the issue too much, but if there was light issues, you'll notice, yeah, see the polygon tearing right here? It does, 3D Studio Max barely has an understanding of what we're trying to do. Let me maximize the viewport for you. So ideally what you always want is to keep polygons flowing constantly like see this break would be weird unless you're just trying to do a prototype model really quick in which case i mean i could just do that and have a good time with that um so really important last thing let's say um everything i want to make here i'm going to extrude i'm just going to extrude here now you'll notice that when i extrude these shapes let me grab this and pull it. They're not soft. Any extruding you make on a 3D object will not be softened. We need to change that by going to a smoothing group tool and using that. So if we clicked on our polygon menu, like we're still in right now, and we scroll all the way down the list of parameters, we have polygon smoothing groups. Sorry if that's a little cut off there. But our model has already been pre-assigned, like from 3D Studio Max generating it, some smoothing groups. Now, I'm going to clear all smoothing groups. I'm going to grab our whole model. I'm going to click clear all. Okay. And now none of my model has a smoothing group number attached. I can now smooth out the model how I see fit. So if I want only one part of the model to be smooth, then I will grab that. And I'll be like, okay, this is, uh, I'll call this number one. So number one means that this, this is my selection that I currently just made is actively smooth but only one associated with the number one. You'll notice if I click off here, there is no number one highlighted. If I click here, number one is highlighted. That means it's active. Anything in blue in 3D Studio Max means it's active. So if I want to smooth it out some more, I will click and add this to group one. You'll notice when I add it to group one, it smooths everything in group one together. They're welded, so it's gonna try and smooth it as best as possible together. However, let's say, Sure, group one should be smooth, but this rest of the pipe or whatever we're making doesn't smooth out with this. It smooths out on its own or smooths into this. Then I would associate it with a different number. So I would grab this and I would say, okay, you're not number one. I don't want you to smooth out, smooth out with the rest of this. I want you to be number two. You'll notice now there's a line separating it. We have our smooth here. It's smooth here as possible for the square, uh, for the amount of polygons we use, sorry. And then smooth here, but we have a nice defining line between it and a nice defining line between this too, because this hasn't been given a number yet. And I'll show you if I give it number two, see, it's nice and smooth now all together. But if I were to take away number two and associate it with number three, you'll see it's smooth in a whole different way on its own. So smoothing groups are a good way to create cool shapes and separate different like pipes, different I mean, different anything on your model. If something is smooth but not smooth with each other, the best thing to do is associate it with different numbers. You'll notice now I have number two, number one, and number 13 here. So we can select by smoothing group if you want to select polygons by smoothing group by clicking select by SG. You can even tell 3D Studio Max to auto smooth how it sees fit, but sometimes that, that more often than not, that doesn't work out really well it's better to customly smooth something on your own. The more polygons you have, the more smoother an object will look. Uh, just don't go too crazy.
Okay. That's a quick summary of the smooth tool, the extrude tool, the weld tool, and the edge extrusion tool. So use those to make your weapons. And good luck.